Hello and welcome to this video on the ICND2 series. In this video, we're going to look at two network management protocols. We're going to look at SNMP and the syslog protocol. So let's get started. So what is SNMP? SNMP stands for the Simple Network Management Protocol. And that's the protocol that helps us to do all forms of network management that we see in networks today. So if you've worked on networks before, you must have seen things like MRTG or PRTG or maybe HP OpenView. Now all these softwares are used to manage networks. They all rely on the SNMP protocol to get our information from the network devices. So what actually happens is that we have three components in SNMP. The first is called the SNMP manager and an SNMP manager is on a server, and all it does is to communicate with the SNMP agent. And the agent is actually what's installed on devices. So every Cisco iOS router and switch, they actually have SNMP agents on them. And this SNMP agents communicate with the SNMP manager, and they feed them information about the network. And all this information is stored in a database called the Management Information Base. Now this MIB contains many OIDs, and the OIDs are just object identifiers. So actually what happens is when you have a router, most attributes on the router actually have their own OIDs. So for instance, every interface on the router has an OID. The state of the interface, for instance, the line protocol has its own OID. So if an interface is shut down, the OID would be different. And if an interface is up, the OID would be different. So what happens is that this OID is actually sent by the agent to the SNMP manager. And because of that, they can know the state of the network. And actually you can use these OIDs to actually configure the network too. So for instance, the manager can actually set the value of an OID and set the value of the interface up and the interface will come up or should set the interface to the interface to down and the interface will be shut down. So you can actually use the SNMP manager to, to remotely manage the network or to respond when the agents are on the network. There are three versions of SNMP. We have SNMP version 1, version 2C, and version 3. Now version 1 is really old and it's not being used again, but version 2C is really used in production right now. And in version 2C, the security features is what's known as a community string. And the community string is just a secret between these two guys, the manager and the agent. So if the correct community string is configured on the agent and the manager, then both of them will be able to communicate but there are two kinds of community strings. We have what's called the read-only community string and the read-write community string. For the read-only community string, the SNMP manager can only perform what's called a get action. So the SNMP manager can only read what's there. It cannot change anything. But for the read-write, the SNMP manager can actually change the values of the OIDs. So it actually configure the devices. And that's what's called the set action. So with read-only, you can only get stuff. You can't write anything. You can't set anything. But with read-write, you can get stuff and you can write stuff. So you can actually change the values of the OID and you can read the values. That's why it's read-write. But the thing with the community string is that it's just one string. So this is, makes SNMP version 2C very insecure. But for SNMP version 3, we actually have uh, many security features. So for instance, SNMP version 3, we have encryption. So we can encrypt uh, with the DS, DES algorithm. We also have authentication. And we can turn on these features. You can turn them on simultaneously, or you can turn one of them on, depending on what you need for your network. So you have authentication, you have privacy. So because the messages are encrypted, it makes it a lot more secure. So imagine you're transmitting the message about the network and sending information about the network, and it's not being encrypted. It means that somebody else can sniff the information and use the information. But with SNMP version 3, encryption has been put in, so it makes it a lot more secure than SNMP version 2C. So we have the concept of usernames, we have the concept of authentication with S, uh, the SHA-1 algorithm. We have the concept of encryption with the detail encryption scheme, and that makes it a lot more secure than SNMP version 2C. But still, most networks deploy SNMP version 2C, and that's the default version that's installed 
on Cisco routers. You can actually configure SNMP version 3 if you want, but for the scope of the CCNA, we're just going to focus on configuring SNMP version 2C. Now, like I said, uh, you can have the set action or the get action, and these two actions are actually performed by the SNMP manager. So the SNMP manager can actually pull and ask the state of a particular interface or the state of a particular feature on the router or on the switch, and that's the get feature where you can set uh, particular attributes. But the third kind of SNMP action is what's called the notification. And in notifications, it's actually the agent that sends information to the manager. So for instance, we can configure the router to say that whenever anybody shuts down the router, it should send the message to the SNMP manager, even if the SNMP manager is not polling for it. So that's what's called the notification. And there are two kinds of notification. There's what's called a trap. And for the trap, what really happens is that you send a notification, but you don't wait for an acknowledgement. And there's what's called uh, inform. And for the inform, what really happens is that you actually send a notification and you wait for an acknowledgement. So the agent sends a notification to the SNMP manager, and the SNMP manager actually acknowledges that notification. And that's what is called an inform. So the difference between a trap and an inform is that with traps, you don't get responses. You only get acknowledgements, but with an inform, you actually get acknowledgements. So generically, that's how SNMP works. And all you need to do when you're configuring SNMP is two things, set your community string, and the second thing uh, to do is to configure the SNMP server. So you configure the SNMP server IP address, and both of them will communicate on UDP 161. So that's how SNMP works. And in the configuration section, what we're going to do is we're going to take a demo of one of the softwares. So actually try uh, to configure SNMP on the router and see if we can get information uh, with this software. So now let's move on to syslog. Now syslog is just a systems log that's sent by an unauthorized device. So for instance, all the time we've been configuring, we've seen things like configure from console by console, or have seen things like uh, line protocol on fast ethernet zero slash one is down. Now these are examples of syslog messages and they are on by default. So how does it work? If you're using a, a syslog server, the iOS communicates with the syslog server on UDP port 514. So it uses UDP 514 to communicate with the syslog server. And by default, the log messages are usually timestamped. So you actually need to know the time which things happen. Now there are eight syslog levels from zero to seven. So the eight levels, uh, where zero is an emergency, one's alert, all the way to seven, which is debugging. Now, if you turn on the level, for instance, we've turned on level four, what it's going to do is that it's going to log all messages on level four, three, two, one, and zero. So whenever you turn on a level, all the lower levels will be turned on by default. So if we want to log all messages in level seven, if you actually want to use uh, level seven, it's going to log all the messages on zero to seven, and that's how it works. And when it actually sends this log, there are three different destinations you can send syslog messages to. You can send it uh, to the console, and that's the one we use by default. So when we're configuring on the console, we can see all those messages that syslog has been turned on by default on the console. But you'll find out if you connect by a telnet, you don't get all those messages. And that's because even though it's logged into the console, the VTY lines don't monitor those messages by default. So you have to turn them on with this command terminal monitor. Now, and the second destination for logging is the buffered logging. So you can log to the buffer, and the buffer is just a space in memory where we can save our logs. So for instance, instead of logging to the console, you can actually log to the buffered memory, and the memory will actually save all the logs, and then you can show all the logs with the show logging command. And the third destination is actually a syslog server. Now, a syslog server is a server that's configured on a network just to store your logs. So for instance, if you have a router connected to a network and you must have installed the system logging software on uh, that server, so the router is actually going to communicate with the syslog server using UDP port 514 and it's going to send logs 
to a syslog server based on the configuration on the router. And now you need to do to configure syslog is to use a login command. So we're just going to say logging. And for instance, you can say logging host, which is to log to a syslog server and give the IP address of the syslog server, say 192.168.2.19. And what this command does is to tell the device whether the router or the switch to send syslog messages to this host. And then you can also define the levels. So now let's go back to the command line and see how it works. So we'll go back to the command line now, and we're going to configure SNMP and syslog on this router with 192.168.1.1 IP address, and the SNMP and the syslog server would be 192.168.1.78. So on the router right now, and what we're going to do is say CompT and configure the SNMP server. So we're going to say SNMP, SNMP server. And there are quite a lot of options, but what we need is a community string and the hosts. So we're going to take, say, community string. We're going to say, it's a word. I'm going to say, uh, how to network. We're going to make it a read write community string. Now, notice that you can put an access list to specify the SNMP servers that could communicate with the agents. We're just going to press enter. Now, if you want to send traps, we need to specify the IP address of the SNMP server. So it's going to be SNMP server. And here we can see that we can specify the host that we receive SNMP notifications. And we know there are two types of notifications, the traps and the end form. So in this case, we're going to say SNMP server host. And it's what's going to be at IP address of the host, 192.168.1.78. And we're going to say that the community string is going to be how to network here. And these are different kinds of traps that we can send. So we're just going to press enter. Now, if we go back to our SNMP server, we can actually configure the software to start communicating with the device. I'm just going to load this software right now. So we have a uh, party GN and I can add a device. I'm just going to call the device uh, big router. And the IP address is going to be 192.168.1.1. I'm going to set the SNMP community string. We're going to call it uh, how to network. We can see the SNMP port is 161, the UDP port. Continue. So that follow this video for a while to let it load the census. But right now we can see that we're learning stuff. We can see that the ping status is okay. CPU load is okay. That fast Ethernet zero slash zero interface is actually using three kilobits per second at the moment. And the CPU is just 0%. The ping time is 16 milliseconds. We can see all these, uh, and that's because it's actually pulling the device and getting all this information from the SNMP agent, which we have configured on the router. So all we need to do is just really configure the community strings and we'll start learning information about the devices. and. That's how SNMP works. So if you have a really large network, all you're going to do is configure community strings on all these devices and configure the SNMP parameters. And you can start using your network management software to gather information about the network. Now, the next thing to configure on R1 is actually to configure logging. And that's syslog. Really don't need to configure anything because syslog is turned on by default. So for instance, if I just control Z, on the command line, we can see the syslog message that says, it says configure console from console by console. Now you have to set the clock correctly, otherwise it's going to give you a wrong time. But since we're logging, it really doesn't matter. Now you're going to try to configure a syslog to send information to a different syslog server. The way to do that is to use a login command. We go to configuration mode 
And we're going to say logging host, and we can put the IP address, which is uh, 192.168.1.78. Now we can configure the parameters. So we say logging. If we use a question mark, we can see that uh, for the syslog server, it's called a trap, just like the SNMP. So we can say that logging trap, and we can put the level. So for instance, if we say logging trap seven, what it means is that all messages from level seven and below will be sent to the syslog server. Also, we have uh, another syslog destination that is the buffer. So we can say it's logging buffered. So we can say uh, logging buffered. And again, uh, we can just say up to level seven. So I can, I can turn off console logging right now and say no logging console. And then when I control Z, I'm not going to see any log because I've turned off console logging. If I go into the buffer and say show logging, I'm going to see the messages. So this is the message that will have sent to the console, but now I send it to the log buffer. That's how it changes. So I'm just going to go back and turn that off and say no logging buffer. But instead logging console. I'm going to pause the video and turn syslog server on 192.168.1.78 and see if we can get log messages. Okay, so we have our syslog server turned on. The name of the syslog server is 3C Daemon. It's actually free on the internet if you need to get one. And it actually acts as a TFTP server and FTP server, a syslog server, and even a TFTP client. So it's a really good software. So let's try to generate a log. I'm just going to control Z out. And we can see the log on the console. When we come to the syslog server, we can also see the log. We can see that it says configure from console by console. So for instance, we want to know what's going on in the network. You can easily just turn on logging and you can watch from your syslog server. It can help to identify when something went wrong with the network and it can help you to troubleshoot the network. And that makes it really easy for network management. So uh, in, in this video, we looked at two network management protocols, SNMP and Syslog. So we looked at the theory behind them, and we also took a look at how to work on the command line. Thank you very much for watching.